Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, members of the court. Myanmar made two arguments about genocidal intent. First, they denied that they acted with genocidal intent in their treatment of the Rohingya. Second, they argued that even if genocidal intent can be inferred from their conduct, it is not the only plausible inference that can be drawn. I will respond to the first argument. Professor Sands will answer the second. What is most striking, Mr. President, is what Myanmar has not denied. So I will begin there. Myanmar has not denied that the UN fact-finding mission reached this conclusion. There is no reasonable conclusion to draw other than the inference of genocidal intent from the state's pattern of conduct. Nor has Myanmar denied that the fact-finding mission reached this conclusion based on seven specific indicators which it found to be, quote, indicators of genocidal intent in the international case law. Nor has Myanmar challenged the propriety of the fact-finding mission's use of these seven indicators or any one of them for inferring genocidal intent. Professor Akhavan identified them on Tuesday. I call them to your attention today only for the purpose of considering what Myanmar said or failed to say about them yesterday. This is the first indicator of genocidal intent. First, the Tatmadaw's extreme brutality during its attacks on the Rohingya. Professor Akhavan and Mr. Lowenstein gave you many heart-rending examples of this from the reports of the UN fact-finding mission. Myanmar did not deny any of it. In fact, its agent admitted that, quote, it cannot be ruled out that disproportionate force was used by members of the defense services. Second, the organized nature of the Tatmadaw's destruction. Mr. Lowenstein showed you how the Tatmadaw employed the same brutal tactics in each Rohingya village in clearance operations that were planned and ordered by senior military staff. Myanmar did not deny this. Nor did they deny that 392 Rohingya villages were systematically destroyed, either totally or partially, during these operations. Third, the enormity and nature of the sexual violence perpetrated against women and girls during the clearance operations. We heard nothing about sexual violence from Myanmar yesterday. Not a single word about it. Not from the agent, not from any of their counsel. Because it is undeniable and unspeakable, they chose to ignore it completely. I can't really blame them. I would hate to be the one having to defend it. Fourth, the insulting, derogatory, racist, and exclusionary utterance of Myanmar officials and others prior, during, and after the clearance operations. Myanmar did not deny any of this either, nor could it. The agent even underscored its significance. Quote, hate narratives are not simply confined to hate speech. Language that contributes to extreme polarization 
also amounts to hate narratives. And here is such a narrative from the Facebook page of Senior General Min Ong Lang, the Commander-in-Chief of the Tatmadaw, before Facebook took his page down. Posted at the height of the 2017 clearance operations, it described, quote, the Bengali problem as an as yet, quote, unfinished job that the government in office is taking great care in solving. He added, we openly declare that absolutely our country has no Rohingya race. Returning to the seven indicators of genocidal intent. Fifth, the existence of discriminatory plans and policies such as the citizenship law and the national verification card process, as well as the government's efforts to clear, raise, confiscate, and build on land in a manner that sought to change the demographic and ethnic composition of Rakhine State. Again, no denial by Myanmar. How could it? Myanmar's laws and policies overtly and expressly discriminate against the Rohingya. All the agent could say was that birth certificates would now be issued regardless of religious background, but not citizenship, and nothing about the confiscation of Rohingya lands. Six the government's tolerance for public rhetoric of hatred and contempt for the Rohingya. Myanmar did not deny this either. And seventh, the state's failure to investigate and prosecute gross violations of international human rights law and serious violations of international humanitarian law. This is the only indicator of genocidal intent the only one of the seven that Myanmar has disputed. The agent herself asked, quote, can there be genocidal intent on the part of a state that actively investigates, prosecutes, and punishes soldiers and officers who are accused of wrongdoing? Mr. President, we could not help but ask ourselves, what state is she talking about? It is certainly not Myanmar. The agent herself made this perfectly clear. Quote, under its 2008 constitution, Myanmar has a military justice system, criminal cases, against soldiers or officers for possible war crimes committed in Rakhine must be investigated and prosecuted by that system. To her credit, the agent acknowledged the difficulties with such a system. Quote, it is never easy for armed forces to recognize self-interest in accountability for their members and to implement a will to accountability through actual investigations and prosecutions. It certainly isn't easy in Myanmar. How can anyone possibly expect the Tat Madaw to hold itself accountable for genocidal acts against the Rohingya when six of its top generals including the Commander-in-Chief, Senior General Min Ong Hlaing, have all been accused of genocide by the UN fact-finding mission and recommended for criminal prosecution. In addition to Senior General Min Ong Hlaing, these include the Deputy Commander-in-Chief, 
vice senior general So Win, and the commanders of the two light infantry divisions, the 33rd and the 99th, which were primarily responsible for carrying out the clearance operations against the Rohingya, Brigadier General Ong Ong and Brigadier General Than U. Two days ago, on 10 December, International Human Rights Day, the United States government imposed sanctions on all of them. The official announcement by the U.S. Department of the Treasury at tab 25 of your folders described the crimes of which they are accused. When you read this document, you will see under the name of each of these generals that these are the same genocidal acts that the UN fact-finding mission reported and that Professor Akhavan and Mr. Lowenstein described on Tuesday. Of particular interest, in light of the agent's comment on accountability, the United States government warned that, quote, such abuses and the continuing impunity must stop. Burma's military must address the climate of impunity and cease abuses and violations of universally accepted human rights. It should come as no surprise then that the Tat Madaw has not been willing to investigate, prosecute, or punish its own members for crimes against the Rohingya. There has been just one prosecution which was initiated only in response to an international outcry 